Well, let's uh, move over to Kenya and check in on how the markets have fared for the day. Looking at the overall blue chip index, down by six tenths of a percent, 4,477 points. You're looking at the likes of Total uh, gaining the most on the day, settling at 15 shillings 40. It was up a rally there of 10 percent, and Rave Pingo falling back by 3.6 percent on the day, making it uh, the one of the top losers. You also had Kenjen also uh, slipping back by 5.6 percent. So you're seeing the market under pressure. You're also seeing the currency under pressure. Uh, just looking at how it's trading against the dollar 87.4 as it stands it has a slightly gained an afternoon trade but it has been above this 87 level and many saying it could weaken from here on out but let's delve into these issues now we're crossing over to Nairobi to get an update on the markets Kenneth Manjiri fixed income and money markets analyst at Stanlib Kenya is standing by Kenneth, thanks for joining us today. So just looking at uh, the overall market right now in Kenya, if you're looking at the equity market, it's weakening. Uh, you, there are concerns around weakening in the currency. Um, would you say that you're starting to see more risk aversion creep into the markets right now? Um, I, I, I think I wouldn't go as fast as it risk aversion. Basically what we're seeing is um, um, investors are holding off in anticipation of the upcoming elections, which are about a week away. Um, we, we haven't seen any major sell-offs. What we've seen is basically volumes on, on the exchange have, have, have decreased. And um, as you know, as our market is mostly driven by volume. So when you see a drop in volumes, you'll obviously see prices start to come off and uh, this will affect the index. Um, but yeah. we haven't seen any major sell-offs. We've seen a bit of profit taking um, after the results uh, that came out um, in, the, in the past week. But um, as to risk aversion and s large sell-offs, no, we haven't seen any of this. What do you make of uh, the resignation of East African Breweries CEO uh, stepping away um, just only eight months after taking up the position? Um, I think it, it will actually on the share, I mean, there'll be an effect on the share price, considering that EABL is one of the heaviest um, foreign trade and stock, uh, stocks on uh, the Nairobi Stock Exchange. It has heavy foreign participation. So we, with um, announcements such as these, we see that um, foreign investors actually take, um, sit up and uh, react to such announcements. Locally, local investors really do make um, any major moves based on uh, Board, uh, board changes or um, CEOs um, being appointed or resigning. I mean, uh, historically we've not seen much of an effect from local investors, but we have seen foreign investors actually take a seat and I mean and uh, sit up and look mm -hmm. what's going on. And after the results we saw um, released um, in, in the past a week, um, which were uh, um, as expected, they weren't as uh, they weren't as strong. Um, I, I wouldn't want to speculate, but I think maybe this could have something to do with it. Yeah. Of course, those results showed almost 15% drop there in net income. But let's turn our attention to uh, the fixed income side of the market, looking at the 91-day T-bills. Uh, those those uh, yields there rising to 8.928%. That's a tick up there from uh, just over 8.2%. Um, what is the signal right now? Are you expecting yields to continue to rise? Um, yes, actually. Um, most, most people were actually surprised by the 70 basis point move. But um, if, if you actually look at the whole money market, short, the short end of the money market as a whole, you'll actually realize what's happening is um, we're seeing a convergence. The T-bill had lagged somewhat because uh, we've seen the overnight has risen to levels above 10%. Repo is currently at about 9.4%. So what we're seeing is basically a convergence. Um, the 91-day T-bill is expected to continue moving up. We may see it slow down as it um, creeps closer to levels of about, um, I'd say, between 9.5 and 10%. It may slow down. But um, generally, I, d I don't think a lot uh, the market really foresaw this rise. Most at the beginning of the year, we expected rates to basically drop off uh, due to heavy maturities and trade flat as we moved towards the elections. But I think what we've seen as um, CBK has come up come into the market to protect the shilling by mopping up uh, liquidity. We've, what we've seen is the rates have started um, rising, reacting to this, especially the repo, which I think has had an influence on um, the other rates at the short end of the curve. So, mm -hmm. I mean, and we, I think the thing is to watch the shilling as we move closer to the elections and even after. Um, basically, it's CBK has proved they'll be they'll be looking. The priority is actually the shilling, so they'll be looking to protect this. What are your views on on the target level that they would be looking at right now, and at what level uh, they would aggressively come into the market to try and halt uh, any depreciation? 
Um, I think I'd, we would see, I think from what we've seen, uh, the shilling uh, creeps closer to 88. They come in quite aggressively, mopping up, uh, mopping up shillings and also at the same time selling off dollars, uh, which is um, so anything 88 and above, I think probably makes uh, Central Bank quite nervous. And of course, uh, heading towards that 88 level as it stands right now, uh, just going back to the to the market, we've got 15 billion shillings uh, in the T-bill market, Treasury bills being auctioned next week. Uh, if you're looking at yields are starting to continue to rise from here on out, uh, what type of support do you think will come through for that? Um, yes, of course, I think um, what you'll see, of course, investors will price in um, the demand for, for liquidity into into the T bill uh, T bill rates, so we expect uh, this will still move up. Um, CBK may try to control the rise, but um, if you if you look closely, I think probably at the market average that will signal the effect and what market behavior is is uh, where market behavior actually is, mm -hmm. and we expect market average will be quite high in the next election. And um, basically, I think. As I mentioned, just look at the shilling. As long as the shilling looks like it's getting weaker, we expect rates will continue to move up. Yeah. If the shilling gains, um, we expect probably that um, the rates may come off. Mm -hmm. Just going back to, to demand right now and appetite for debt ahead of the election, uh, the results of the 15-year paper that uh, auction uh, that was held recently have come through. What type of demand uh, did you see for that? Um, there were those two papers, the two-year and the 15-year paper. The two-year saw heavy, heavy subscriptions. Uh, about 25 billion, uh, sorry, 35 billion came through, looking to to pick this paper. Um, CBK only picked about 20 billion. On the 15-year, we saw subscriptions of about 9 billion, with the central bank only accepting four out of the 9 billion. So um, th those are quite, uh, I mean, the subscriptions are quite heavy, but also what we saw is the central bank matched um, the upcoming maturity, the maturities that are expected next week and um, what, what they picked from the market because um, it was actually about 25 billion both ways. Mm -hmm. um, basically, and I mean, the rates rose up. We haven't seen much secondary activity on these two papers. And I think as because of the nervousness in the market and um, the market basically looking for direction, we don't expect a lot of secondary market activity on these papers in the short term.